Hey guys, what's going on? Counterspell Hater here, back with another EDH guide. <clears throat> We're getting back into Innistrad Crimson Vow uh, with Helena and Alina partners. Uh, for two generic, a green and a red. I said that backwards. Red and a green, excuse me. Uh, they are a legendary human ranger 2 3 with first strike and reach. And they say at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus encounters on another target creature you control, where X is Helena's, Helena and Alina's uh, power. That creature gains haste until on the turn. So we have uh, stuff to make Helena and Alina uh, bigger. And then we have the stuff to uh, go along with it, uh, kind of value. Here's where I'm looking for. So let's start with Fungal Behemoth. The three generic and the green is a fungus whose power and toughness are each equal to number of plus one plus one counters on creatures uh, with control. Uh, spend X, so X generic and double green. X can't be zero. So you remove, so you exile this from your hand and then put X time counters on it. And then when, at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove the time counter and uh, from the suspended card. And then when the last time counter is removed, you may cast the card without paying its mana cost. And whenever a time counter is removed from Hungal Behem, Fungal Behem, excuse me, while it's removed from the game, uh, you may put a plus plus count on target creature. Removed from the game back in the day was uh, what stood in for exile. Colonian Hydra for three generic and double green it is a Hydra zero zero with trample, uh, but it enters in with four plus plus counters on it. And whenever it attacks, you double the number of plus one plus counters on each creature you control. Vigor uh, for three generic and trouble green is an elemental incarnation with trample, 6-6. Six, six. If damage would be dealt to another creature you control, prevent that damage and put a plus one plus counter on that creature for each one damage prevent, prevent it this way. And when vigor is put into a graveyard from anywhere, so it dies, it gets milled, it's discarded from your hand. Uh, you shuffle it into its owner's library. So eventually make them back. Invigorating Surge for two genetic and a green is an instant that puts a pulse plus power on target creature control. And then you double the number of pulse plus powers on that creature. Forgotten Ancient for two genetic and the green. Uh, it is an elemental with uh, elemental O3. It says whenever a player casts a spell, you may put a plus one plus counter on Forgotten Ancient. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you may, you may move any number of plus one plus counters from Forgotten Ancient onto other creatures. So obviously onto our commander. <clears throat> Vorin Clex Monstrous Raider. Uh, for four generic and double green, it is a 6-6 six, six legendary Phyrexian Predator with Trample and Haste. And it's a, and he says, if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice as many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. And if an opponent would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, they put half that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead, round it down. That's with Hydra. Uh, for X generic and double green is a zero zero Hydra that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus counters on it. And when it dies, you may distribute a number of plus one plus counters uh, equal to the number of plus one plus counters on Bestwood Hydra among any number of creatures you control. Hydra's growth for two generic and green, it is an enchantment aura, enchanted creature, enchanted. Uh, when Hydra's growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus counter on Enchanted Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus plus counters on Enchanted Creature. 
Ava Rook, caretaker for four generic and double green. Uh, she is a human werewolf uh, with hex roof. She's a four four as well. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus plus counters on target creature you control. Day bound. If a player casts no spells uh, during their own turn, it becomes night next turn. And then Hollow Henge Huntmaster uh, is a werewolf with hex proof as well. Six six. And other parents you control have hex proof. Uh, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, put two plus plus counters on each creature you control. Night bound. If a player casts at least two spells during their own turn, it becomes day next turn. It's pretty really nice. Doubling season before generic of the green enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice as many of those tokens instead. And if an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, uh, it puts uh, twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. Branching evolution to double the plus one goals of counters for two genetic and a green it's an enchantment that does that. Xenagos, God of Revels, for three genetic, a red and a green. Uh, he is a legendary enchantment uh, god with indestructible, and he's a 6-5. Uh, and he says, as long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, Xenagos isn't a creature. Uh, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, Another target creature you control gains haste and gets plus X plus X until in turn where X is that creature's power. So put this trigger before your commander's trigger. So then you have, uh, so then her power is improved. So you can put more plus X counters onto another target creature, uh, but that is not your commander. Now I think we get into value. Uh, so Sakiko, Mother of Summer. Uh, for four generic and double green, she is a legendary snake shaman, uh, three three, and she says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, uh, add that much green mana to your mana pool, and this mana doesn't cost mana burn. Mana burn was a uh, old thing back in the day that we do not need to worry about now. Uh, until end of turn, this mana doesn't empty from your mana pool as phases end. Iridescent horn beetle. Four generic and a green uh, is an insect 3 4 that says at the beginning of your end step, create a 1 1 green insect creature token for each plus plus counter uh, you've put on creatures under your control this turn. Feed the pack for five generic and a green is an enchantment that says at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non token creature. If you do, put X to two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is. Is the sacrifice creature's toughness. Elemental mastery for three generic and a red. It is an enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature has tap, put X, one, one red elemental creature tokens with haste into play, where X is this creature's power, and remove them from the game at the end of the turn or exile them. Uh, Krubus, uh Harvest Celebrant for X generic and double green. It is a legendary tree folk, zero, zero, that enters battlefield with a number of plus plus counters on it, equal to the mana spent to cast it. So not X, but mana spent to cast it. So it includes the green that was spent to cast. And then remove a plus plus counter from Kervis, uh, and then prevent all damage that, be, that would be dealt this turn to another target creature with a plus plus counter on it. So keep your stuff safe. Crowned Ceratoc. For three generic good or green is a reno with trample for three. And it says each creature you control uh, with a plus plus counter on it has trample. Battlefront Krushok uh, for four generic good or green is a beast, three, four, that cannot be blocked by more than one creature. And each creature you control with a plus plus counter uh, can be blocked by more than one creature, just like Battlefront Krushok. So it makes it uh, even more kind of more difficult to block, I guess chump block. Uh, Lithio form engine for four generic is a legendary artifact that for two generic it can tap and copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets with the copy. So copy uh, Helena and Alina uh, partners ability, uh, triggered ability. 
So triggered abilities use when, whenever, or at. And our commander just so happens to use one of those words. And activated is when it's like uh, this right here. Like you pay mana to tap it, or like just pay mana to tap something in general, or like a certain cost. Uh, for three generic and for third generic, you can tap it also and copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. Make sure you charge with the copy. It's okay. We are not running much in that in this deck, but it could still be handy possibly. But for four generic and we can tap it. Uh, copy target permanent spell you control. The to the copy becomes a token. So that means you can double up uh, creatures, at least like one per turn. Still pretty cool. Mirag. Fury of Akam. Before generic can double red, he is a legendary Minotaur warrior, 6-6. Six, six, and he says, each creature you control gets plus one, plus one. I mean, plus one, plus oh, excuse me. For each time, it has attacked this turn. Uh, and whenever a land airs about field under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. So that is another opportunity for Helena and Alina to trigger off and put pulse and pulse counters on a creature we control and give it ace. And they're going to be more powerful uh, if they have attacked the previous combat that was given by Morag Fury of Akam. So all in all, a very great card. Definitely recommend it run in these decks. In most red decks in general. Uh, Strionic Resonator. For two generic, it is an artifact that for two generic, you can tap to copy target, trigger the ability you control, and you may choose new targets as a copy. Uh, so once again, our commanders. Crystalline Giant for three generic, it is an artifact uh, creature giant, three three, that says at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have on it from among flying, first strike, death touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, uh, Menace, Leech, Trample, Vigilance, and plus one, plus one. Put a counter of that kind on Crystalline Giant. Uh, so this helps us take advantage of our commander's ability by giving uh, Crystalline Giant here all those keywords. It can start to really do some damage to our opponents and help us out throughout the game. And it's nice and cheap. Life Shield Colossus, a little hefty costed, but Still pretty much worth it because of what it has. Because for 12 generic is an artifact creature golem, 11 11 with trample, infect, and indestructible. Three important keyword terms. Trample to help it get through like small creatures. Our opponents may use to block it. In fact, to possibly end the game due to the fact that this deals damage to creatures in the form of monster and monster encounters and to players in the form of poison counters. And if at any time a player has 10 or more poison counters, as I previously stated in like other videos, that player loses the game. And this an indestructible to give it a sort of protection and make it pretty hard for our opponents to remove. And on top of that, if it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Blight Steel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So I guess from hand in that case, maybe, or and also mill. Possibly also dying. Uh, Cranko, Tin Street King Inn. A very good card. Definitely recommend running it in this deck as well. Because for two generic and red, he is a legendary goblin. One, two. And whenever he attacks, uh, put a, you put a plus one plus counter on him. And then you create a number of one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Cranko's power. So since, uh, hello. Alana and Alina will be putting pulse plus counters on Crank on Cranko, uh, making him bigger before he attacks. Uh, he'll probably be putting out a decent amount of goblins to allow us to block on the crackback if need be. Sakai, Seasons Guy, five generic and triple green. It is a legendary spirit, zero zero, that comes into play with eight pulse plus counters on it. And if damage will be dealt to uh, Sakai, prevent that damage and remove that many plus plus counters from Sakai and put that many 1-1 color spirit creature tokens into play. 
And then you can sacrifice eight spirits and return Sakai from your graveyard to play. So this is an eternal blocker, an eternal arm regenerator. Due to the fact that we're putting possible scars on it uh, at each combat. And that uh, by the time it has died, we will have eight or more spirits. So then it can come back uh, and keep on giving us blockers. Fungal sprouting for three generic and green is a sorcery that puts X, 1-1, one, one, green, sampling creature tokens onto the battlefield, uh, where X is the greatest power among creatures uh, you control. So that was pretty nice. Pathbreaker, Ibex, four generic, and double green is a goat, 3-3, three, three, that when it attacks, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until on the turn where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So pretty nice. Hunter's Insight for two generic and a green is an instant that as you choose to target creature you control, then whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker uh, this turn, draw that many cards. Soul Spire for two generic and a green is an instant that deals uh, damage that has target creature you control deal damage equal to its power to any target. So your opponent, your planeswalker, a creature, whichever it may be. Old Knobbone to help us with a lot of mana ramp. Because for five generic and double green, he, I presume, or I guess is, is a legendary dragon, 7-7 uh, seven, seven with flying, that says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, create that many treasure tokens. So, and treasures, if you did not know, uh, artifacts that can tap to sacrifice themselves and add one mana of any one color to your mana pool. So pretty nice. Cloth, Unrivaled Ancient. If you haven't seen this guy yet, pause the video. Uh, go watch my Cloth uh, Commander Guide video. Uh, I recommend it. It's pretty good. It may be unnecessary uh, due to the fact of like, how much mana you'll have, but still pretty fun idea. Anyways, back to the video. Uh, for five generic, a red and a green. It is a legendary dragon uh, with flying in haste, 4-4. Four, four. And when it attacks, add X mana in any combination of colors. So you could do half red, half green, all green, all red. Doesn't matter. Excuse me. Uh, where X is the total power of attacking creatures, spend this mana only to cast spells. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So, again, more mana fixing. Ubrosk, the hidden, refrigerant, and double red. It is a legendary creator. 4-4 uh, four, four, that gives uh, creatures we control uh, haste and creatures your opponents control and battlefield taps. Berserker's Onslaught, refrigerant, and double red is an enchantment that gives attacking creatures we control double strike. Scourge of the Throne for four generic and double red. I was about to say double green. Uh, uh, it is a dragon with flying and the throne, five, five, meaning that whenever this creature attacks, the player with the most life or tied for the most life, put a puzzle with counter on it. And when it attacks for the first time each turn, if it's attacking the player with the most life or tied for the most life, uh, untap all attacking creatures, after this phase, there's an additional combat phase, so pretty nice. Allows another trigger off of our commander. Uh, Targ, Nar, Demon Fang, Null. Uh, running in green for a legendary Null. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, pack Tactics. When it, or he, I guess, attacks, if you attack with creatures, uh, if you attack with creatures with tall power, 6 or greater, this combat, attacking creatures get plus one, plus zero until end turn. And then for two generic, a red and a green, you can double his power and toughness until end turn. Stalking Vengeance uh, punishes our opponent for killing our stuff because for five generic and double red is an avatar with haste by five. And whenever a creature you control is put into a graveyard from play or dies, uh, it deals damage equal to its power to target player. Wildwood Scourge, X and green for a Hydra 0-0 zero, zero that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus counters on it. And whenever one or more 
Plus of those counters are put on another non-Hydra creature you control. Put a plus of those counter on Wildwood Scourge. Those other plus of those counters are being put on non-Hydra creatures we control. Thanks to Helena and Alina. Uh, Wildwood Scourge is also getting plus of those counters slowly. Delta, Rival Hunger. Uh, 10 generic and double green for a legendary elder dinosaur, 12 12, will trample. And it costs X less to cast. Rex is the total power of creatures you control. So this will be a pretty cheap 12 12 trample uh, due to the immense power level of our creatures. Primordial Hydra, X generic and double green for a 0 0 Hydra that enters battlefield with X plus plus counters on it. And says the beginning of your upkeep. Double the number of plus one plus counters on Primordial Hydra. And as trample as long as it has 10 or more plus one plus counters on it. So as you're putting counters on this thing, then at the beginning of your upkeep on that next turn, it doubles all those counters. Alexa, stop. Then we have Kusari Gamma. Uh, the three is an artifact equipment. A uh, creature has two. Generic. Uh, this creature gets plus one, plus one until in the turn, so we can equip this to our commander or another creature because uh, whenever a quick creature deals damage to a blocking creature, Kusari Gamma deals that much damage to each other creature defending player controls. So if we equip this to our commander, we could use the ability to pump up our commander and then using our commander's ability since it'll have been pumped up, uh, give something a lot more plus or plus counters, or we can equip this to one of our big creatures that already have plus or plus counters on it, and whenever that creature becomes blocked, or, or I guess deals damage to a uh, blocking creature, then it can deal that much damage. No, sorry, Gamma, give, deals damage to all other creatures that defending player controls. They could cost a three generic, by the way. And we have Sure Strike Trident for two generic. It is an artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature has first strike and tap unattached Sure Strike Trident. And then this creature deals damage equal to his power to target player. And it could cost a four. So, in case you didn't know, you pay an equipped cost and then you attach to target creature you control. Equipped only as a sorcery, so most of it on your, on your turn only. And this card. Uh, comes into play unattached and stays in play if the creature leaves play. By the way, in case you did not know, but now you do. Runaway Steam can another great ramp card. Because for one generic and a red, it is an elemental 1-1 one, one that says whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steam can has fewer than three plus plus counters on it, put a plus plus counter on Runaway Steam can. Then you can remove three plus plus counters from Runaway Sinkin and add triple red. But because uh, we are putting plus and plus counters on it through Hel Helena and Alina, uh, partners, our commander, uh, we are kind of going to be able to cheese this system and get a lot more mana than what we would out of Runaway Sinkin. So that'll be nice. Balefire Dragon. Five generic and double red it is a dragon with flying six six. And when it deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. So if this is nice and pumped up, thanks to our commander, it could possibly wipe our opponent's board if it hits them. Slumbering dragon for a singular red is a dragon with flying uh, three three, but it can't attack or block unless it has far more plus plus counters on it. And whenever a creature attacks you or Venzor, for however, you put a plus plus count on Silvering Dragon. So not only is your commander uh, boosting this thing's prime from this, but also itself. Uh, Mage Slayer, one generic, one red, and a green is an artifact equipment uh, that says whenever a creature attacks, it deals it deals damage equal to its power to uh, defending player. Which side note, by the way, if your creature would happen to have Life Link. Or uh, infect, or what else? Like renown, or like 
combat damagers that like says, oh, when this deals combat damage, things like that. Mage like Mage Slayer sort of effects uh, will account for this. Equip cost of three. Uh, Gyre Sage, uh, one generic green for an Elf Druid with Evolve, one, two, meaning whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, if that creature has power, has greater power or toughness than this creature, put a pulse of counter on this creature, and then you can tap to add a green to your mana pool for each pulse of counter on Gyre Sage. So since we're putting a lot of pulse counters on this, not because of Evolve, but because of our commander, this could also get us a lot of mana, so pretty nice. Hero's Bane, the three generic and double green is a Hydra zero zero uh, that enters in with four plus six counters on it. And for two generic and double green, put X plus six counters on Hero's Bane where X is its power. Uh, so this, our commander here will help uh, make that activated ability uh, very worthwhile. And our 50th card, probably the card that we may use to end the game, Triumph of the Hordes. Because uh, it's a sorcery for two generic and double green that states until an eternal creature you control, get plus one plus one and gain trample and infect. That probably just ends it right there. And then we have our non basic lands, Moss War Bridge. You've already seen this plenty of times. So it allows us to get something for free. If you haven't seen me explain this, go watch some of my other videos like Shatter Fang. Like, keep the views up with that, guys. I like that you got like 32 views on it. I'm very grateful. Uh, other green commanders, go check them out. You'll probably find my small sword bridge at the end. Uh, Kissing Wolf Run, uh, however, I will tell you about. It's a land that can tap for colors or for X and red and green. It can tap to give uh, target creature plus X plus O and trample until end of turn. So we can do that to our commander to allow it to put a lot more counters on a creature we control when combat rolls around. Then we have Spine Rock Null. Uh, I'll explain this one to you because I don't think it shows up as much in my videos. Could be wrong. But either way, this land earns about field tax. And when it does, you look at the top four cards of your library, exile one face down, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library. Uh, you can tap to add a red, or for red, you can tap it. And uh, it, you can play the exile card without paying its mana cost if an opponent was dealt some more damage this turn which most likely they will have due to tremble effects and other damage related effects. Rogue's Passage to make something unblockable because uh, uh, for four generic you can tap and third creature is unblockable this turn or it can tap to give you a colorist, but who wants to do that really? And we have 23 basic forests and 23 basic mountains. And along with that, the end to this uh, commander guide of Helena and Alina partners. Hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Uh, please keep it up with the positive uh, amount of views that I'm getting on that Charterfang video. Uh, really makes my day to see that uh, view count go up, but it also makes my year even better to see that subscriber count go to 10 maybe but i'm happy at eight uh i like the like i like the likes that you're giving me uh so keep up with that share this video with others along with other videos you may have already seen that came before this one uh hit the notification bell that we just don't miss more of this content and I will see you in the next one, guys. And we and remember, I've forgotten to state our rule here lately. No, counter.